Good morning. Yeah. Um, your, your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, it is an honor to be here uh, today and address you at a Housing for All conference um, in Vienna. I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me, but most, um, most of all for organizing this um, important event. Be oops. Because um, housing matters. Um, housing systems in Europe are rich and diverse, each shaped by vagaries of history and experience. And I know that the room is full of housing experts that know this um, to very, very details. But the questions of housing affordability affect us all. The affordable housing matters today more than it mattered at any point of our recent history. Um, so at this junction, I would like to add a bit of uh, fire uh, to the previous uh, conversation um, and um, in our academic tradition to start to crack some numbers and think about legislation and think about challenges and think about policies and think about implementation and what should be doing. So bear with me with this um, cracking of numbers and a little bit of maths of that is coming. So we would be talking about, a little bit about housing challenges um, in, and affordability in Europe, a couple of numbers there. Um, uh, trends in housing prices and fragmentation of the housing markets. Um, we will be looking a little bit um, and talking about the EU urban agenda, EU urban agenda and the housing partnership, whose members are here today with us in the audience and, um, and, and the partnership that I was very uh, proud and I'm very proud to be a, a part of. And then we would like to think a little bit about the future um, and what possibilities are ahead. Again, trying to crack some some numbers, uh, trying to think about some legislation um, uh, and some policy in, 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 in Europe and on member state level. So um, the, a decade after um, a world economy has been hit by financial crisis, um, our global uh, economic recovery is broad-based and stable. However, global financial crisis has changed the way the housing systems operate. And the benefits um, of economic recovery are yet to be shared uh, in the housing sector. There are 82 million people um, in Europe alone who are housing cost overburdened. Uh, they spent, uh, they are um, housed well, but they spent more than 40% of their family income on housing. The overburden stems from um, from rents and mortgages on one hand and utility uh, bills um, or energy bills on the other, depending on the country, depending on the region. Significantly, uh, the housing need has not only increased, it has also diversified. And we see in recent findings that it is not only the no and low income families or, uh, or uh, people who are looking uh, for housing. We have increasingly and worryingly aging population, young adults, young families with children. One of the statistical ca category that came from one of the member states were women. Yeah. Um, um, middle income uh, and even middle class families. And this is a worrying trend where the key workers and even middle class families find it very difficult now to find affordable housing in global and capital cities that they serve. Homelessness, as we heard from Leilani, um, has increased markedly. Um, observed social housing wait, waiting list, and you know the numbers better than me, um, uh, are hitting historical records. As a result um, of the past decade, uh, the social housing, the past decades of policy, and the social housing has been rec uh, reduced through the reduction of funding, through demolition, through um, a lack of investment, private uh, rental sector has uh, um, received limited attention, and the home ownership was the um, was the policy preference pre preceding the uh, the global financial crisis. Now. Um, as the result of the previous policies, our continent is a continent of homeowners. But have, here have to we have to remember that home ownership is uh, has, uh, without a doubt, provided and provides benefits to those who can afford it and sustain it. The presently, the access of home ownership, and this is the worrying trend, is increasingly challenging. 
Uh, in the majority of the EU member states, uh, the, the housing prices have well recovered to the pre-crisis levels. And we have this uh, recent graph of the progression of our prices from 2007 to 2018, so over the 10 years. We are back in the levels, more or less, that preceded the, the global financial crisis. However, the worrying trend is that now uh, the housing prices increases decoupled from the income increase. So just to give you an illustration here and about the fluctuation of prices, and I would like to go a little bit into that uh, 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 number crunching and uh, uh, maths here. So if we're looking at just at the last um, uh, second, uh, second uh, quarter of 2018, uh, uh, the prices in Europe as a whole have increased 4.3%. Of course, this is not true if we are looking at the national level. Uh, in that, at national level, the housing prices are different and the fluctuation in the, is different. So if you are looking at uh, some of the countries that has, have experienced the most significant increase of prices that are double digits um, in one quarter, we are looking at Ireland, Portugal, uh, Slovenia and Hungary, and we have moderate decrease in prices in Sweden and Italy. And these are some of the examples. I could not go into all of our member states. Um, that would be too much um, <laughs> number cracking this morning. So, um, um, that we, what we actually also have to kind of uh, think about when we're thinking about the future of a policy is that housing markets are not only different between the countries, but they differ within the countries. Different regions um, have different prices, um, and uh, we have to move away from the macroeconomic uh, analysis if we are looking at the, at the, uh, at the, at the finesse of the housing uh, policy and look at the regions and the fragmentation of the housing markets and how they uh, look like. Uh, the most importantly, um, if we are zooming in more, and I hear I'm uh, giving the example of Germany, the sub-regions will not function the same in terms of dynamics of the housing prices. So the, the housing prices increase will be different. So I'm going to give you a completely different statistical category. And here we are looking at the housing price increase um, in selected German cities over the 10-year period from 2007 to 2017. And we see that, for instance, in Frankfurt, the increase of prices in 10-year period was 68%. In Munich, that increase was 144%, which is a worrying trend. And look, looking back to two-digit increase of prices that we uh, saw on the member state level, just an interesting statistic here to think about is that if we allow 10% increase of housing prices um, uh, over a year, in seven years, our property values will double. That means, and our incomes just don't grow as fast as that. So, if we are looking at Europe in a global perspective, um, the, the housing prices in capital cities are now increasingly starting to look more uh, like one another than their national economies and their national sub-markets. So I think as these Europeans, we have to ask ourselves broadly, are we looking at or some superstars here? Because eight of 20 most expensive uh, cities in the world are now in our continent in Europe. Um, so they're here. Uh, so are we looking at superstars or are we looking at bubbles? And it, it is an important question to ask, especially if we are thinking about our European um, regulation. In European Union, the policy instruments available today um, um, and I'm saying that uh, the housing partnership are, is making lots of steps to try to ch change and, and, and advance this to a different direction. So in uh, European Union, the policy instruments available to address this and prevent future housing bubbles are implemented either at national level or at euro area level, that is monetary policy. However, recent research suggests that housing price developments are local um, issues, really, and the bubbles are, in fact, local uh, local issues. So the crucial policy significance uh, when we're looking at this is that when the local housing markets put high pressure or exclude the local workplace, um, an increasing mismatch 
of housing and employment may undercut the functional efficiency in urban planning and economy, which means that our bubbles might not last or our superstars may not be superstars for a long time if the labor that that actually brings the works and carries out the work in our superstars uh, cannot afford to live there anymore. So, if we're looking at housing and land prices uh, that grow, um, so uh, housing, the, the the housing and up, uh, the housing and uh, land prices growth increases, um, with the need for already limited social and affordable housing in cities, um, and in turn it puts uh, pressure on already tight public purse on social and affordable housing. And how tight is the purse? That I get again, I leave to you to your experience and, and knowledge of, in your own area. The number of households not being able to access home ownership nor social housing because of the reduction of the sector is putting pressure on the private sector. Um, that is now a lo lucrative investment uh, with the questions about affordability, tenure security and quality being posed anew. Now, housing sector is going through a significant reassessment uh, in majority of uh, the EU member states. However, emerging um, uh, research demonstrates that the new policy measures have focused on providing institutional uh, uh, st stability first and foremost to the shock of the, uh, the global financial crisis. And that was rather than the adaptation or, or transformation to, this, uh, to a state that is less exposed to systematic, uh, systemic risk associated with flows of global capital, debt, or se speculative activity. So that means that we are very much at the beginning of the process where the member states are starting to go and through and, and work through a, a reassessment um, of um, the housing policies within the EU member states. In addition, the housing issues have gained increased attention across uh, the European Union and at the European uh, level, even though, according to the Treaty of the, uh, of the European Union, housing is not the responsibility of the uh, European Union, but it is the responsibility of the member states. Many initiatives and funding streams and policies affect housing field. And I would just like to give you the little map, a little map of complexity um, and, and, and the work that he is being done in a, commission, in a commission that never comes under the title of housing, but it nonetheless affects and contributes to the housing fields or shifts the housing field. So we have DG Regio uh, working on regional development in contributing um, uh, with their policies and funding to the housing field, um, DG Energy on energy renovation, DG Competition on le legal issues, uh, DG ECFIN on European semester, and so on and so forth. And many voices have been recently um, uh, raised to call for better coordination of these uh, policies, funds, to, uh, so that they are able to affect, to, to give better results in the field. And so this is where we come to the urban agenda and the housing partnership. So. Urban Agenda gave an important platform to explore some of these issues that I just mentioned. The Urban Agenda for the EU was launched in May 2016 with Pact of Amsterdam. It represents a multi-level working method promoting co cooperation between member states, cities, European Commission and other stakeholders in order to stimulate growth livability and innovation in cities in Europe, and to identify and successfully tackle social challenges. The housing partnership is one of the 12 partnerships that were launched under this agenda. Within their mandate, within our mandate, uh, the Urban Agenda Partnership for Housing examined key trends and challenges in housing sector, but most importantly, came with some solutions and um, uh, uh, brought together and uh, drafted together an action plan that I am sure will be discussed in more detail um, uh, through, uh, throughout the day today um, and where the uh, challenges that we were facing and we were uh, we 
we actually examined or identified will be um, uh, spoken about in more detail, and uh, as well as some solutions. Uh, but my job today is uh, to give you some more challenges this morning before the coffee. So here I go. Um, so I would like to highlight some challenges um, that the housing partnership and we underline. So I pick only three for now. Um, so first is um, legal uh, and financial uncertainty uh, that we thought was very, very important to be addressed. So available EU funds um, provide essential support. So we cannot deny it. However, the partnership observed that there is a need for more flexibility in budget and financial rules on the EU level to enable investment in affordable housing, especially where cities are willing to invest in so, uh, affordable housing and social housing um, uh, and where the resources are in fact available because we sometimes face the situations where the resource is available but some other uh, rules they don't come together and therefore it is hard to invest um, in housing or combine for instance private and public funds that is increasingly needed because the funds were re reduced. There is also a need for clarity around the application of legal rules such as for instance state aid rules on the EU level. Um, in order to unblock uh, investment in social and affordable housing. Um, data. Uh, I mentioned, as I mentioned before, the global financial crisis has changed the way the housing systems operate, uh, which means, um, in scientific terms, that we are looking at some new phenomena. And unfortunately, we still don't have data on much of this phenomena. Phenomena. Let me give you just an example about uh, the capital flows and investment flows. We learn from these flows primarily through the reports of investment funds. This is where you can get the information where the investment is going. But we don't have an overview of the European level that is, uh, that is neutral that will tell us what in fact happened. We uh, depend on private consultancy that were probably commissioned by the same funds in order to map these. Some of them are very honest, thinking about the risk of the bu uh, bubbles for their own self, for instance, but some of them are less so, and, and I'm sure that you were acquainted with, uh, 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 with some of them. So consistently collected data and evidence um, and analysis are crucial to affect policy changes that are relevant to the realities of housing systems post-global financial crisis, and to support access to affordable housing to those in need. Tools and appropriate data at subnational levels, such as uh, uh, regional and city levels, such as maps that I showed you before, we would love to have a map of Europe that will show us housing prices of sub uh, sub uh, national, uh, regional, and city levels, so we can compare rents, so we can compare prices, so we can compare the dynamics and see what ca can be uh, done and what uh, specific policy can be written. So. Uh, we need new governance and new partnerships. Along with evidence and data, new partnerships and new governance structures are needed. Political support at national and city levels, along the possibilities of knowledge exchanges, is essential in this process so that the resources are used efficiently and that next housing um, and consequent financial crisis is potentially uh, prevented. And now we move, um, and now we new move to potential future. And some of um, uh, the ideas about the next steps and and recommendations, thinking that um, find financially reduced. Uh, social and affordable housing is remarkably fluid and subject to innovation and novelty. We are now at the crossroads, and we can choose our path. Uh, we are in the crossroads between the ways that resulted in housing prices and experiment uh, cri uh, housing pri crisis and experimentation with new and innovative uh, solutions. This might be potentially the biggest change since the 1980s when the policies turned to marketization of housing. This could be our chance. However, as we move forward, there are further issues um, that we might think about and follow forward the policy directions that we might may consider. Um, 
future policies, first and foremost, will have to um, uh, address fundamental market failures and closely examine the links between the financial uh, crisis and financial markets um, and um, housing markets. They will have to reassess and recalibrate state intervention in housing fi finance for results that are more adapt to present and future housing market dynamics while responding to increased and diversified housing need. Um, we will need more options, more housing options, more housing tenures, more affordable housing options because of the varied housing need and customer profile, diverse portfolio of um, housing choices should be provided. Future policies should su support um, uh, housing on a housing continuum from emergency shelters and service housing through subsidized housing, um, uh, social housing, affordable rent, affordable home ownership, and finally private rent and home, uh, home ownership. That should be, uh, uh, remain um, affordable to the local labor. Global financial crisis, again, uh, it should be emphasized, has changed the way the housing systems operate. There are new actors and new behaviors in the field, and this is something that has to be underlined. Um, well, uh, these are the new behaviors. This is a new phenomenon that has to be mapped, that has to be examined, and when the, we have the evidence of what is happening uh, uh, specifically, <laughs> it should be regulated because these are new phenomena. The new phenomena doesn't mean that if they're coming from a different um, policy um, uh, 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 background, especially before the crisis, we we have to uh, be brave and bold to question them, examine them, map them, and potentially regulate them. Um, um, issues related to housing and production uh, and consumption systems, for instance, um, in global and capital cities, including investment flows, property and land banking, short lets, or uh, Airbnb is called out here, uh, should be examined among other important issues in order to aid secure and long-term access to affordable housing um, uh, to uh, the local population and uh, local labor. <laughs> So as we move forward, um, um, I would just like to um, share with you um, uh, uh, this thought um, that there are no, or underline something, something that you already know, that there are no cities without housing and there are no affordable cities without housing. And as we move together, diverse in Europe, um, it is about time to have back our European voice in housing. Thank you.